Hey guys, we're here with the feature match winner with uh, White Forest, uh, Chi. Uh, he also went, uh, what, top four at the 3v3? Yeah, we, we played, uh, my team and I, we played the 3v3 and unfortunately we only got uh, fourth, but um, yeah, it was really fun. Awesome, awesome. Well, uh, what, are you, what are your thoughts on this deck for the format? It's really fun. Actually, in the 3v3, it performed way better than expected. Uh, after the feature match, I lost pretty much every dice roll and <laughs> going second against like the, the full combo boards, it was just really tough. So, but like th this deck uh, was really fun and it, it performed for me. Awesome. Well, let's get to the list then. Right. So, uh, for the White Woods package, I play two Ast Astellar, three Elzats, uh, three Sylvi, and one Rukea, uh, and then one of the Spell and Trap. So, even though this is the best, um, best because uh, because uh, this by itself is the level eight synchro. The problem in the Runic version is. Uh, when you get hand trap, like this gets Veiler, you end on nothing. Like this just does nothing. Uh, you'd rather much summon like the level four because all the Runix cards they're um, the level two extenders, uh, and this uh, adds on summon. So even though this is the best, I only play two of it because I didn't want to play too many normal summons. But this is also a very good pitch for Hugin because you don't have to use your normal summon because it will revive back uh, when you uh, use, for example, when you use LZ or when you use Synchro into the level six. Uh, if you have LZ or uh, Sylvie and you have Asteria, you usually want to pitch this for Hugin, and it's like it's really good value. I I, I only play one of the spell and trap. I, the trap is really good. I search this uh, first all the time. The the spell is very very bad. Uh, I don't know why they made this in Ultra and this a common because this is bad and this is insane. This one, even though it's a Rota, you actually never need to go through it uh, with the Runic cards because you have the extra level two. And because since you only need to control, um, you have to control a spellcaster, which these are the only ones you play. It's like really awkward uh, when you draw this and no other uh, no other white witch cards because this is just complete brick. Uh, I I did I did think of playing more of the Arcaea because the drawing is like nice and runic, and once you go through the first one uh, and you reset it, since it's always negated, it's nice to have an extra one in deck. But it kind of does nothing by itself, so it's just that one. Uh, so that's it for the white forest cards. Uh, and for the runic part of the engine, uh, two fountain, obvious. Like this is just like complete standard. Three tip, three freezing, three flashing, three destruction, uh, three slumber, and one and one. Yeah, so 17 ricks. Uh, there was enough space to fit 17, which is good. Um, I sat out this pretty much every single time, and it, like it was really, really. These were like amazing. Um, the runic cards, because they add level twos, a lot of your quote unquote not one card stars become like one card stars. Like for example, uh, LZ and like um, and the uh, Sylvie. Um, the actual body does come in uh, clutch a lot of times, and a lot of times since this has the deck has a completely free tempi matchup because the only way they can outskill drain is because of they like lightning storm or something. And obviously, if you get to protect, um, yeah, everyone knows these cards, so I, there's no point going in anymore. Uh, so that's it for the runic engine. Uh, the rest is non-engine. Uh, I didn't have space for that many, uh, and you kind of want to play like spells and traps because that's how like your uh, engine works. So I played uh, two black gold laughs. This is a, like an insane pitch for Hugin for any of your cards. Uh, uh, it actually didn't come up that, but it was like a little bit weird because like the first action you do is um, when you Hugin and you pitch this. Um, going second, you can call one of the cards that they uh, that is a really big threat to your board. For example, you can call like Desiree. Desiree is a huge problem. Uh, Apple sometimes, but Apple's like not All like right, that bad uh, because of because of flash and fire freezing curses. Uh, but SP is also like like a huge problem. So this was really good. Uh, I made deck three evenly. This overperformed. This was like I I won every game I saw. I lost every game I didn't see. It. Um, but you don't need a first battle phase, and in the, especially in game one, no, they don't. If you're going second, you don't. They don't. They don't know what you're playing. They'll always call your bluff for evil. And uh, there's so many. Like yes, there are there are Desiree and there's like Omni Negates in the format. But this pairs with so so much of the runic cards. For example, if you if you're going against a Desiree, you have three three tip and three uh, destruction to destroy the the, the targeted thing, uh, the the sequencia, and that's how you can get your evenly to twelve. Uh, evenly came in so much so clutch. Um, and then the rest of the stuff is the uh, one Valor, <laughs> and so this I this actually won me my first game in the future match. Was really happy. I only play one of it because um, it's searchable off of uh, Arciella, and the whole point is that there are some times where like they for, for example if they draw phase your in your uh, your level eight synchro. Uh, you, there's no point summoning the Book of Moon uh, character, uh, um, synchro, right? So I will sometimes summon uh, this one, and this will add, can add Valor. So that's the extra interruption. 
uh, that gets me a little bit of value. Uh, so only one Veiler and then one Iris Torso. Uh, so I thought like it came up in testing where this card, I needed an extender after I'd gone through all my like synchros. And I didn't really have like, so for example, searching uh, the, the names after you use them already, it's just for follow up. But like sometimes you need another body to push push for like an SP play. Uh, this also helps make, make Synchro 12s because it's a level eight. This also helps make a light like Chaos Angel, which is like a really, really strong card. Um, yeah, so this was good. And also it's searchable. So like, for example, there's a lot of uh, cards in the format that uh, summon from deck, for example, uh, like the Snake Eye cards, like the uh, some, uh, I can't think of anything else, but like, yeah, for example, the Snake Eye cards. Um, and what this does is when it's summoned uh, and someone summons from deck, you can draw two. And drawing two in a runic, card, runic deck is always like very strong, right? Um, so that's it for that. Uh, the rest of it is like three skill drain and one call by. Yes, main deck skill drain. Yeah, um, I'm basically playing uh, runic stun, haha. But basically, the, this is the deck's uh, win con. Um, this deck, like, is amazing under skill drain. It's um, you also you send you, you send your cards for cost, uh, so you can always send this if you want to play under it. You can always recycle it back with the level eight synchro. You can always um, you can always use the effect to book like book book on their turn and then chain the level four to return to extra deck, so the book will still revolve. Like this card is just like every time I saw it, it's pretty much game over. Like the, they like they had no out to it. Like it's just especially game one, like it's just completely over. Um, yeah, so that, that's the main deck. And the one call by is just uh, because of hand traps and stuff. Like, draw is a pretty big problem against this deck. Um, this was kind of mediocre because a lot of times I had, I had to, I didn't have that many spells in my hand, so I had to pitch call by, but I had to save call by because if they Ash or Veiler me, I, like, I lose, right? Uh, so this was like, probably I would cut this, like, this is not that good. Uh, so that's the list of 41 in the main. Uh, I could have gone to 40, but uh, 40, 41 doesn't make that, that much of a difference. And, uh, yeah, I just designed them for you. Uh, so for the extra deck, uh, one, one, one. You only need one of each, and these were like the cards I summoned the most. Uh, this card is so broken, like it's so insane. This the oh, my end board is usually just Diabel, Fountain, and maybe like the trap, and that's it. Like you don't need anything else. Like this card is so so good. Um, yeah, like that's that's this engine. Um, the the running stuff is uh, one Gary and two Hugin. Uh, I actually wanted to play the second Gary, uh, um, but I ended up cutting it for a card that actually was not good. But uh, it should have been the second Gary. This helps make a light and dark Chaos Angel, which against, like for example, Sankai, they have no out to it unless it's Imperm. So sometimes you're just, like if they stop you or, or whatever, you can just make this, sit on it, and they actually have no out. Uh, especially like, and then when you back it up by rooting cards, it's just like, well, what can you do, right? Um, yeah, these were, these were good. Um, Hugen is like a boss. Uh, for the synchros, uh, Tri Edge. Uh, so this is my level six non tuner. It draws one, uh, and Changing uh, is the big boy. He, um, I made him quite a bit. Usually make him with Tri Edge plus, and then shovel back a level four. This is usually how you, uh, uh, the turn one end board. If you go like full full combo with no like, uh, with, you draw like a, a lot of extenders, and um, you end on uh, Changing plus. Uh, plus the uh, Di Diabel, and then when you have running cards, this becomes like really, really insane, right? Um, and then the other level 10 synchro I played is Chaos Angel. This is pretty much a win con against a lot of decks. This was actually kind of uh, not that good because it was impermed a lot, but in theory, it's like really insane, right? You make a light, even a light Chaos Angel is like, the only out to it in the uh, Snake Eye deck is access code. Uh, and if you have this back by like a flashing fire or whatever, they can't out it, even if it's just light, right? Um, so this was really good. It also protects your other synchros from like um, uh, effects. So that, that was nice, but I, I didn't make this this much today, uh, but in theory, it was really good. Uh, then I played the other synchros I played, one Scarlight. Uh, this never came up, but it came up in the 3v3. I like, and it blew up in uh, Tenpai player's entire board when I basically had no cards left. So I think it's like mandatory to play. It's also like your time win con. Uh, I never went to time though. So like, that was nice uh, because like this deck, like even though it's a runic deck, like people are, people are gonna scoop when you have skill drain and then they see you can reset it. Like, th like they're, just, they're just gonna scoop. So it's like fine. Uh, one Legacia, this is the level 12 synchro. I wanted a level 12 and this like this was the best one. This one, because it's really easy to make level 12, uh, especially when you need have trouble clearing bodies. Uh, it's easy to make with like Diabelle plus any of the um, level four tuners, right? Like they shovel back the level six and they summon, you can make this. And then if you can get an extra body, especially like if you have Iris Source or something, you can link these into SP and that clears two bodies. Uh, it draws one also, it's like really nice. It's a big beater on a skill drain. So uh, one Zapper Shrimp, this, 
Uh, so the how the, how it works is uh, the level eight, the Diabel, um, the second effect it summons uh, a tuner synchro, and this is the new one from Info. This is basically formless synchro, but on special summon it also MSTs, and it also can send one of your spell traps for cost, so it can trigger resent and stuff. So this this was like. I mean, it didn't come up much because honestly, the I was summoning the Book of Moon a lot, but like this, this you would th synchro these into a Chaos Angel or Changing on their opponent's turn. So this was also really good. Um, yeah. And then the last two cards, like three, uh, one Baguska. This is for Shifter. So when I go Hugan Effect to summon and they, they change Shifter, uh, like against Senpai or something, or like a Ritual Beast, or whatever. If you have another level four, you can make this and just sit on this for a bit and you won't lose that much resources. Um, SP. Uh, it's obvious, it's SP. And the last card, this was like the worst card in the extra deck, uh, Nightmare Cerberus. Mm -hmm. I basically never made this card. But the idea is that this deck has no way to clear the nip, uh, your own nib token on the field. Um, all of these, like, uh, synchros, you can't really synchro with a nib token. This requires effect monsters. So, like, if you have a nib token, it's, like, kind of awkward. Uh, but this never, almost never came up. I, or at least it might have come up, but, like, I always forgot to, that I could summon this. Uh, this could have been something else, like the second Gary. You could even play, like, um... I don't know, like Nightmare Unicorn, Selene, all of these cards. Like, I wanted a Nightmare card because the effect to discard it actually, if you discard a spell, it will trigger all your, uh, like, the Asteria from Graveyard. So you can get back into engine that way and you can get more bodies. Uh, but it was not that good. Um, I probably cut this on three seconds. Uh, and that's it for the extra deck. Uh, for the side deck, uh, three Bistials. These help make a light and dark Chaos Angel. Uh, it's actually a win con uh, against a lot of decks. Uh, you can just like uh, summon one of this, summon a level four, single into Chaos Angel. They actually can't can out it. It's a uh, like light and dark. And unless you have Imperm, like it's, it's basically game over, right? Uh, these I always sided in against like like these are really popular, so it's like uh, you would want to hit like Sequentia or something. Uh, but honestly, I, I never really drew these, so I can't really comment on how uh, great they were. Uh, in theory, they're good though. Uh, also, oh, also one more cool thing is that if uh, they flamber, you you open Jurusworm and they flamber your Jurusworm into a spell trap zone, it becomes a spell and you can pitch it for cost for one of your White Woods oh, cards, wow. and you get the effect to send because it's sent from field to graveyard. So that's really nice. Um, that came up uh, once actually. Uh, Triple Phantasme. Uh, so I took most of the side deck uh, inspired by Joshua Schmidt's. Um, uh, a visual runic deck. That's why I play, I play Phantasmate. Phantasmate is just like uh, a way to draw in the more high impact hand traps, but it's also like a body uh, that can help make SP on like the first you can summon. And it's also um, the targeting protection actually won me won me a game where I, the only, my only starter was uh, Ast Astellar and he had a Veiler. And if that I would have passed like if he Veilered it, but like the fact that I can uh, protect it and discarding spells is always like good in this deck because it triggers all your white woods cards, right? Like. Uh, yep, uh, so that was Phantasme. Uh, Ash Blossom, uh, this was mostly for Yuvel. Uh, Ash on Lotus, uh, uh, Requiem and stuff. I didn't put this in against Snake Eye because like, one hand trap is usually not, not enough to stop them. Uh, this was also for Yuvel. I thought Yuvel was like a pretty hard matchup because like, they have their their full end work since you're not hand them is like Varudras uh, and Desiree and that's, that's basically two Omni Negates and they, if you can always chain to Dark Ruler, to negate Dark Ruler with them. Um, yeah, which is like the last like three three spots, right? They can always negate the dark room by chain chamber. So that's why I, I wanted more hand traps against them. Uh, n never really saw it because like the first the only U Bell player I saw when I had Droll, the first thing he did was make Phantom and U Bell. So I'm like, okay, sure, whatever. Uh, and the last card was Dark Ruler. This was really good. Uh, it probably would have won me the three v three if the um, if he didn't uh, draw a Judgment off Wanted and then negate <laughs> then negate Dark Ruler. So yeah, this was. Really good. Uh, and that's it for the, the, the side deck. Um, yeah, I think this deck was really good. Uh, it's obviously like way worse than the Fiends Missing uh, versions, but like I think it's really fun and it's like very unexplored, right? Like uh, you can do a lot of cool things. I think the level eight synchro, I think that card is completely broken. It's like the adding a spell trap from Grave is just so so strong. And it's like the 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 White Woods package is a really small package in the extra deck too. So you don't need to play like uh, that many. You can just play more generic stuff, right? Um, and I think that's it for the profile. Awesome. Well, uh, any last shout outs? Uh, yeah, shout outs to my 3v3 team, uh, Matthew Team Nestor. Jacob and Chetta. <laughs> the real winner of this event. Uh, shout out to all my friends that I came, yeah. that I came here with. Guys. And shout out to you, James. I uh, appreciate you a lot for doing this. Awesome. Thank you. Yep.